Stewart. I'm one of the leaders here uh, for Atomic Habits, uh, powered by EXP. By the way, if you have not joined our Atomic Habits, powered by EXP Facebook group, you should, because we do put our recordings. We put Tom's Freedom Friday. We put the Atomic Habits uh, on Wednesdays on there. I believe we also put Don Yoakum's trainings uh, and coaching on Tuesday. So it's really good. I know we're growing as a group really uh, quickly and new people coming on. And sometimes they're not told about the Atomic Habits uh, Facebook group. So you want to do that. But uh, we meet here as our team meeting, as you guys all know, but share it with your people that we meet here uh, every Wednesday, 9 a.m. Pacific, and we'll go anywhere between 9.30, 9.45, typically, depending on the guest speakers and information we have to share. So today, I actually am stepping up. Uh, I didn't get a guest. I'm the guest today. You're stuck with me today. And I'm going to be sharing with you some of the things that I do in regards to um, listing appointments and securing listings and you know getting a 6% listing uh, fee and a 495 TC fee. Uh, basically, every time I go out, um, sometimes you can even get a 7% or what have you, depending on how you structure it. And yes, I do get sellers asking me before I ever get in front of them, well, how much is your commission? And I say, uh, well, you know, how much do you want to pay? Unless, you know, sometimes they don't even know. They'll give me a number and I'll go, well, yeah, we could certainly work with that. It all depends on just, you know, how much of my marketing you want to cut out. But we'll we'll go over that when I get together. But we have uh, various marketing plans I will tell you ahead of time, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, that typically most sellers choose either the standard 6% or sometimes even the 7% commission. Um, but I'll go into details on why that is and why they uh, you know, aggressively want me uh, to go that route for them. So they're kind of like, wow, that's interesting. That's kind of okay. Um, so we get together. Um, now, a couple things. I want to go over when you secure the appointment. If you don't already, and most of the pros do, I know Tom does and so on, you should have a pre-listing package or a system in place that you're um, sending out, right? Uh, I call it a uh, daily method of operation in regards to listings, right? Kind of a checklist of what you do so you don't have things slip through the cracks. Uh, some examples would be if you don't have an about me link uh, or if you don't have a website, you should get a website. If you don't have uh, an about me link on your website, you should, and you should put all the glowing stuff in there about you because you want to direct your uh, future clients, um, your sellers, to review that ahead of time before you come, uh, before you show up in front of them. And so I will, when I secure the appointment, I will text them or email them or both say, you know, hey, I really look forward to meeting with you and I confirm the appointment. We're going to meet, you know, Thursday at, uh, you know, 3.30 uh, at your home. And before I get there, would you please, uh, to make better use of our time, would you go and, and do a quick review of my uh, About Me link and also check out my website? Or you could also direct them to your YouTube channel. Uh, by the way, if you don't have a YouTube channel, you need to get one. Every realtor needs to have their own YouTube channel. It's it's a prerequisite in today's real estate economy. Um, so you need to get that going. Then the other thing is I'll I'll actually do a video text. Video is super powerful uh, in today's world. Uh, a text message isn't necessarily enough. I will send a text right uh, with the about me link. And by the way, you can put in both Android or iPhone. Um, you can put a little, I don't know what you call it, like a, like a cheat. So let me, let me put something in here. So you, you get your text up and then you can do a code, like a three digit code. Like I put S I G and that pops up my about me link. So I can just click it and it's already pre-populated. I don't have to type it every time. And then when I send it, it will actually be an active hyperlink that they can click on and it'll show a little, depending on if it's an iPhone or whatever, it will show my logo and all that stuff. So these little things make a difference. Um, I would always try to direct them to your about me link. So after I do the physical text, then I will do a video text. Okay. You go, wow, you just sent a text. Well, yeah, video is super important and you want to build rapport as soon as you can. So how you do that for some of you that are not aware, um, 
sorry, getting super basic because there are some people that are like, well, how do you do a video text? So anyway, so you go to text and then over here on camera, if you were to take a photo and then you would switch it to video and then you would change the camera to selfie, right? And then I would just shoot, hey, uh, Mr. And Mrs. Smith, I'm really looking forward to connecting with you uh, this Thursday at 3.30. Um, I did go ahead and text you my about me link. I would love for you to take a moment and review some of that information. I think it'll make our time more productive as we get together because I'm really excited to get into less about me and more about you and uh, what we do for our clients in regards to marketing and uh, getting our clients more money uh, than the typical realtor and doing it in less time with less hassle. So super excited to see you. 3.30 on Thursday. Take care. Bye-bye. And then I click send. Okay. Now, also, old school, you should write a handwritten note. The more that you can touch them, because again, in sales, it's repetition of touches. You can't just re re uh, rely on the appointment and just showing up. So um, you should send out a handwritten note with a thank you. And then also in the handwritten note, directing them to your About Me link or your YouTube channel or be creative, something else. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and mute Patrick there. Let's mute Patrick. All right. Okay, so all this is being done before we even show up at the appointment, okay? You're trying to differentiate yourself from the competition uh, and so on. Um, one of the things that I used to do, I don't do now, but I would go to a FedEx store or a UPS store or whatever, and I would get those plastic, uh, the, the plastic envelopes, you know, a little flexible. And I would just say, hey, I do a lot of shipping. Can I take about, you know, 15 or 20 of these? And they go, yeah, sure. And so I would then put my listing, uh, pre-listing package or different things that I wanted in the plastic FedEx. I would seal it, address it. And then I would just make it a point, either myself or a team member to drop it on their front door and um, and ring a doorbell or what have you. And um, it looks like, you know, wow, he is like on it. He FedExed it like that, you know, cause we're in a culture of Amazon where things are like, you order it that morning and it's there in the afternoon. It's like, wow, right? Okay, now the next thing is we're going to get into showing up at the appointment. And uh, first off, is there any questions? I know I'm blowing through a lot of information, but are there any questions real quick on the pre-listing type uh, aspect? Everybody clear on that or any, uh, any questions? Love the video text, so effective. Okay, anyone going to EXPCon? Okay, all right. Okay, now we're showing up at the appointment. I have the mindset, and maybe it's because I'm a little more analytical, even though I don't think I am, but people tell me I am. I um, I like to overwhelm them with information because I want to show them that I really am the expert in the marketplace. I've done the research both on market trends as a whole, uh, also on trends in regards to their specific zip code, and then drilling it down even based on their you know subdivision and local area. Um, so I come really prepared. I think as Don Yoakum has said in the past, you're coming prepared for full-on nuclear war, but if you only need to use the pea shooter or the rifle, then you do that, okay? But I am ready to basically come with, uh, you know, nuclear war, so to speak. Anyway, so when I show up, one of the things is you definitely want to show up on time. Realtors typically run late. I'd show up, you know, about five to seven minutes early if you can. I wouldn't go too much earlier than that. It it kind of stresses your people out. But if you're there five minutes or so ahead of time, that would be ideal because you're going to get out and you're going to look at the property. You're going to kind of walk out front. You're going to have your iPhone or Android or whatever and take some pictures and video. Not that you're going to use any of it later, but it's just you're you're showing the seller that you're there fully present and you're really interested in their property um, ahead of time. Okay. Then you uh, end up not, you know, obviously knocking on the door. You want to build rapport as quick as you can. I'm always looking for things from the minute I get out of the car and I'm walking up, whether it be certain plants, trees, flowers, um, how they decorated their yard, anything that I can bring up that they're going to take pride of ownership that I can compliment them and and bring forward um, attention wise. Uh, when you get in, if you can see, you know, in regards to their kids playing soccer or whatever, like Russ, you know, he goes, hey, I coach soccer, right? Yeah, my daughter is really good at soccer or whatever, right? It is soccer, Russ, right? Am I correct in that? Or no, softball, softball, right? 
softball. Okay. So, uh, so anyway, it's all about rapport. I'm going to go and identify the dining room table or a place that we can meet and I can control the situation. I'm not going to sit on a couch at the coffee table because there's some information. I'm the professional. I'm prepared. I really want to show them some things and educate them on the market. And I figure that they have me there and they want to be led. They're willing to pay a professional that's able to show value. Remember, whenever there is a questioning of price, there is an absence of value in the mindset of the person looking to pay. So um, so I'll say, hey, is it okay if I set my stuff down here at the coffee table? Or I'm sorry, at the uh, dining room table? And they go, oh, yeah, that's sure. Sometimes you got to clear stuff off and move you know, placemats and all this different stuff. I just kind of take control and do that. I go up, this is okay. Oh, yeah, that's fine. And I say, I'll tell you what, why don't you go ahead and if you wouldn't mind, grab me a glass of water, grab a glass of water for you. I'm going to go through um, the house on my own. You know, I do this all the time. I'm going to go through um, and just kind of see uh, a few things and get acclimated with the house. And then we'll meet back at the dining room table. Okay. Now, the reason I don't have them go through the house with me, um, man, it can be a long appointment. Because they're sitting there telling you all the little details that they've done on the house and this baseboard and this trim and this specialty, X, Y, Z, whatever, right? Now, when I get back to the table, I'll say, hey, were th was there one or two things? And, and actually, you might want to do this before you get there. You might have a, a sheet that you ask, um, prompts you to ask questions about different upgra upgrades and things they've done with the house. That would be a good idea as you're pulling comps and doing your um, preparation. Um, and then that'll allow you to go through the house without having to have them show you every little nook and cranny in detail. Um, but typically I'm, you know, I'm going through in five or 10 minutes and I'm, and what would be good is to take a notepad and a pen and just say, you know what, I'm going to buzz through. I'm going to take some notes on things. I, I do this all the time. Don't worry. Um, and then we can kind of compare notes, uh, later. Would that be okay? And they're like, great. And I go, great. I'll look forward to that cold water. I'll be right back. Okay. So now we come back and we show up uh, at the dining room table. Now, when I get started, before I get into, um, I'm going to plant a bunch of seeds. I'm going to let them know that if I deliver value and I tell them, I say, Hey, my belief is that when there is a questioning of price, there is an absence of value that's been delivered or better yet, not delivered uh, by the realtor. And so it is my goal as a professional to deliver overwhelming value to you so that if you were to ever talk to any other realtors, you, I would be so far ahead and above in regards to expertise, knowledge of the market, and so on, that you would absolutely choose me. Is that fair as as, uh, as as a salesperson looking to work aggressively for you um, to ask that? Is there any reason that if I wow you with value that you would not list with me today and take care of the paperwork? I just get it out right at the beginning, right? And they'll say, well, we got this, we got that. We got another agent coming later, you know, tomorrow. I say, okay, that's great. Again, it's my uh, goal to overwhelm you in value that you would not want to waste your time talking to another realtor tomorrow. Um, and I feel very strongly that I'm going to do that today for you. So if I can measure up, is it fair that we can go ahead, that I can be your real estate champion today? Um, would that be okay? They go, well, yeah, let's see. I go, fair enough. Let me prove myself. All right. So then, um, so I've already kind of planted the seed that I'm walking out with the listing agreement. And I tell them, I said, look, I'd be a terrible salesperson. I wouldn't hire me if I was not aggressively looking to ask for the business because you're going to want me to ask for the business when I'm working for you. Again, I'm planting seeds when I'm working for you. Um, you know, I'm an aggressive negotiator and the stats that I showed you in my pre-listing package, we definitely get more um, more money for our sellers and we sell the homes in less time than the, than the average realtors. Uh, in the Board of Realtors. And I'm going to prove that to you today. Um, so anyway, so I'm planting these seeds all the time. And uh, the first thing is I'll question, I'll say, did you get a chance to review my website, my about me link and you know all that stuff? Um, yeah, we did go through it. Very impressive. Great. Okay. No worries. Not here to stroke my ego. I just want to make sure we have a good baseline of who you know, who you have before you. 
Um, I take this very seriously. This is my career and I've done it for many, many years at a high level. Um, and then number two, I'm going to go into what sets me apart as a realtor. Um, it's very easy to get a real estate license today. In fact, it only takes about 90 clock hours to get a real estate license. Were you aware of that, Mr. and Mrs. Seller? Wow. No, I didn't know that. Let me put that in perspective for you. Did you know it takes 180 hours to become a licensed truck driver, to drive fruit across state lines or something like that? And, and it only takes 90 hours to be a licensed uh, realtor working uh, for you to sell uh, usually the highest uh, investment that you have in your in your lifetime. Uh, that's a little concerning, uh, don't you think? It is for me. I think it should be many more hours to be able to get to be a licensed realtor. Um, I'm also a broker, which is even another level higher of uh, training and teaching. Now, if you're not a broker, okay, no worries. And if you're newer in the business, you're going to mention your success team members, okay? Um, the people in your success team in EXP. So if you're in my organization, you'd mention me. One of my business partners did this. He's a broker. One of my other business partners, we worked together. He was the number one agent in the world for Keller Williams for seven years. He's done over 9,000 transactions. So we've come together about a year ago so that we could better serve our clients, right? Okay. Um, and I'm going to go into some stats when I say what sets me apart uh, from realtors. The first thing is, is, and I had kind of have a cheat sheet. Um, I start giving some stats and I have a placard, by the way, I'm part of NAEA. I'm not saying that you need to be, but it, it's kind of helpful. Um, it's got some stats on here. And one of them is up to 46.2% of homes fail to sell. Were you aware of that, Mr. Seller? I know we've been hearing that it's just a seller's market and it's crazy and things have been going nuts the last uh, couple of years, but things have changed with the interest rates that have gone up. Uh, there's a lot of homes out there that are failing to sell. Uh, in fact, 65% of homes that do sell are selling below asking price. Were you aware of that? Oh, no, I didn't know that. Uh, the average agent only sells 5.9 homes a year. Did you know that? So you're definitely going to want to work with someone that's got a tremendous amount of experience. Now, if you're new, you're going to want to go ahead and talk about your, your team, your business partners, right? You and Tom Daves, have sold, I think he's already done 120 sales this year or so. I think I saw, right, Tom? Something like that, 127 or so. So you go, hey, we're a high performing team. We've done well over 100 transactions so far this year. Um, and then I mentioned about the 90 clock hours. And then I say, look, most realtors, it's really shocking. They only spend on average about $206 uh, a month on marketing. On marketing, your $700,000 sale. Um, my team and I, we actually spend far more than that. And I'm going to go into details. In fact, and then that's when I transition into, bear with me. I transition, uh, I show them my marketing book, okay? Now, early on in my career, when I had a listing appointment, I would go, I'd have to go to my office and I'd have to do, you know, print out certain pre-populated kind of, you know, pages and, you know, like make the listing book and all that stuff. I don't know the terminology of it, but I used to be stressed. Like I'd have to make it one off for every listing appointment. And if they said, hey, can you come over an hour? I'm like, oh my gosh, like it takes me a while to put all that book together and blah, 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 and so on. And a coach told me, he said, well, why do you do that? Why do you do for every listing? Your marketing doesn't change, right? It's the same every time. The only thing that changes are the comps. The listing paperwork's the same, you know? And I go, well, that's true. And he goes, yeah, why don't you just make a marketing book? Why don't you go through and put everything down, make a list of everything that you do in marketing from the smallest thing to the biggest thing, from putting a real estate sign to putting flyer box to putting on, you know, um, digital lockbox, you know, just list everything you do in regards to marketing as a realtor. And then from there, go and take specific screenshots of all the various things that you do marketing wise, like your Facebook page, your business page, your personal page, your Instagram page, your YouTube channel, your LinkedIn, uh, whatever else you do, right? TikTok, so on. And just start putting all these together, taking screenshots and printing out full color pages. And basically what you're going to put together is a 
marketing book. And you do not ever leave that. It's it's what stays with you all the time. And so now I'm not stressed when somebody calls and says, hey, can you come over an hour? I go, sure, absolutely. Um, I could even be out driving around. I go, hey, I'm near you, you now. Let, let me swing in and we can you know meet in the next 30 minutes. Because I don't necessarily even need to have the comps ready right then because I can let them know on such short notice, I wasn't able to do a detailed analysis, but I, I'm very good at an analyzing properties and so on. And I'll do a market analysis for you and I'll email it and we can go over uh, either in Zoom or I can come back in person and go over the pricing of the home. So when you have a marketing book, the stress went away for me. I always had it in my car. I'm ready to go because really what the clients are hiring they're hiring an expert marketer. It's not someone that can identify the exact price because if you go that route, some realtor will come in and tickle their ears and give them a higher price. You know, if I come in and say, oh, it should be 550 and Jackie comes in and goes, well, hey, the market's unpredictable right now. We really, we should do it at 585. Why would you leave money on the table? Let's at least try it. And she's just doing it. And now Jackie would never do this, but she's just doing this to get a listing agreement signed. And she knows over time, she's going to work them down on a price reduction. Um, you know, I don't work that way. I'd rather list it properly from the beginning. Um, anyway, so the process that I have, I go into what sets me apart. Then I get into my marketing book. Now, um, let me, I'm going to go over my marketing book and you guys can, you know, get ideas and so on. So the, and hopefully you can see it. Um, first one, I, you know, some of my certifications and things of that nature, I talk about EXP. I would put why EXP in my pre-listing package, to be honest, uh, you know, most transactions of any company, uh, independent brokerage in the country today, fastest growing real estate brokerage, um, you know, tech driven, all these kind of hot buttons, right? Then I have my resume, my kind of basically about me or whatever. I don't really spend any time on that because I've already drilled it into them to go see it ahead of time. Then I have a page in here about first impressions last, and this talks about staging. Now, I don't personally stage in regards to bringing in furniture. I don't believe in that. Um, I don't think it's really needed. There's other people that think otherwise, but I tell the client, I said, look, my goal is to get you uh, not only as much money in the sale, but to keep as much money in your pocket through the process. And I have found in my studies that having a uh, hiring a staging company and rented furniture and so on and so forth, and that expense doesn't really produce the return for the amount of money and ex um, hassle that you're going through. Now, if it's vacant, you could look into that. You could also do virtual staging. But basically what I say is I find that most clients' furniture is good enough. And so I will have a specific staging consultation with you, Mr. or Mrs. Seller. Uh, I will come back and we will go room by room. You'll have a notepad and I'll tell you what to take out, move, you know, change, et cetera, et cetera. And that's all included in the standard uh, service fee, okay? Then I start getting into building the, 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 uh, the stage of, um, internet percentage of home buyers who found the home uh, they purchased on the internet. So I'm really kicking and driving that home about you got to be on the internet. I also talk about that all of the um, big big name uh, websites that they know of, um, their home will be on those, the Redfin and Zillow and Remax and, and so forth. Just because it's eXp doesn't mean that we don't put it out to the greater marketplace. So we do that and they go, oh, okay, that's good. And then I talk about how important social media is, YouTube, linked, uh, LinkedIn, Facebook, et cetera. Now, this is an old page. You can tell I've had this book for a while because Google Plus doesn't exist anymore, right? So uh, you guys will have a more updated book than me. Then I get into the aspect, um, and you can do some of this, this research online, okay? But this is basically a graph and it shows... Um, website traffic report, where traffic is coming from. And 68% is from social media and social, 23% direct traffic. So I say, hey, that's like postcard signs, traditional real estate. And then this is now, you know, new age, cutting real, cutting age, uh, edge real, real estate, uh, social media and so on, which we utilize greatly. Then I say, look, we do a lot of research in regards to major marketing and which platforms are being used and which aren't. 
The ones in pink are the ones that are not being used. That would be your Pinterest, Snapchat, Messenger bot, et cetera. But the big five, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, I go, that's where the major marketers are being uh, are putting their money and time. And that's where we're going to put our money and time and expertise in for you as well. Then I go into the various platforms, right? Facebook, over 2 billion users and growing. YouTube, the number two search engine in the entire world. And it's not even a search engine. Did you know that, Mr. And Mrs. Seller? Um, no, I didn't realize that. That's why your realtor better have um, better have a YouTube channel. Because what you're hiring, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, is an expert, expert marketer, okay? And so then I go into the aspect of marketers have yet to embrace Snapchat, you know? So again, Snapchat's gone, really. Uh, I don't hear anybody really using it much. But again, the big five, I'm drilling that home because that's where I've taken the time to put a presence of myself on those platforms. Then I talk about mobile marketing and how that has really increased um, in regards to searching, it's gone from you know your PC and, and laptops to now mobile. We're really going towards mobile. Then I show them a screenshot of my Facebook page. Now I highlighted on here. I have four thousand seven hundred nineteen friends. I said, Mr. And Mrs. Seller, do you realize that as a personal page, you're you can only have up to five thousand friends. And I have 4,019, and this is actually old, this screenshot, I have more than that now. But what's even more important uh, from the net that I cast is the net of the individuals within my net, right? So for example, this gentleman, Michael Baggett, he's got 2,468 friends. So I'm marketing, that's just one of my 4,700. So it's it's not who I reach out to, it's who they reach out to. So we cast a really large net for you in regards to marketing and getting your home exposed. Then I go into my um, Facebook business page and I explain the difference. And I said, look, with a Facebook business page, you're able, I'm able to target market geographically and, and uh, really drill things down. Um, if it's something to do with golf, I, I did create a Facebook page that is golf home coach because I was a collegiate golf coach. And so I utilize that in my real estate. Then I give an example of some, one of my Facebook ads. I said, look, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, this is a property that was listed by a big name brokerage. You probably heard of Century 21, been around a long time. He had it listed for nine months, couldn't get it sold. And uh, the seller got frustrated, started interviewing agents. I was the the last and final one to be interviewed. And the reason for that is he hired me on the spot. Uh, I think I was the fourth or fifth agent in. And he was just so frustrated. And when he saw everything that I do in my marketing book, he was literally blown away, hired me on the spot. I ended up selling this property in the first week for $10,000 over asking price uh, because we are such an expert marketing um, team. Now, and then I bring up down here, I go, Look, we have organic reach of 811. We got paid reach of 1,666. But Mr. And Mrs. Seller, I want to point out the most important. This is post clicks. Okay. 1,065 people clicked on it. What that means is tell me more. I'm interested. That's what's really important. Okay. Then I'll go into the aspect of Instagram and how important it is. And that Facebook bought Instagram. And they're over a billion users and growing. And now because we can market on Facebook, we can also market on Instagram and do paid ads. This so is I awesome, Matthew. We have a quick question from Andrea. So uh, where can the agents find these graphs and these resources? Um, good question. I will, um, I'll, I'll put that out. Um, how could I get that out to everyone? Um, why don't we go ahead and put that in the Atomic Habits link here, okay? Put it on the Atomic Habits Facebook page, Matthew. Facebook page, I mean, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, okay, yeah, I'll do that. Because I, I got a lot to share, so I want. I know we're pressed on time. So awesome. Instagram, I highlight, you know, 1,400 uh, followers, 2,791 uh, following me. I go again, all of these social media channels appeal to different users. For example, Pinterest appeals more to the female genre. Uh, LinkedIn per, uh, appeals more to the professional, usually college graduates and they have a job and so on. 
Here's uh, you recognize this house, Mr. And Mrs. Seller. That was the one I just told you about since you're 21. We did a coming soon ad on our Instagram uh, channel. And look, we got engagement. Uh, I should tell my brother and his wife, you remember little Jojo, not so little anymore, Sacramento County Sheriff now. And I go, oh my gosh, wow. Yeah, I'm getting old, LOL. I'd love to reach out to him and tell him about this property, okay? Then I go, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, you should have Twitter. We know about Twitter. In fact, I actually have two Twitter accounts, Matthew Stewart Real Estate and Matthew Stewart Realtor. Remember, we're going to do professional photography. I'm not going to be the realtor with my iPhone or my Android. And again, I'm, I'm knocking out if they're talking to any other realtor and, and they're not paying to have a professional photographer, right? So I said, look, we don't do that. We invest the money because your house is important. You're important. So we get professional photographers and professional videographers. We're going to put together a, a, a full color you know, video walkthrough. And then that's all content that we can post on these social media channels. Okay. Stuff coming out here. All right, LinkedIn. And then I highlight how many, um, you know, I have 4,843 contacts. It's actually more now. And I talked to them about the differences of the different social platforms. And I said, look, this is my YouTube channel. If, you, if you're talking to a realtor that doesn't have a YouTube channel, you are not talking to the right one, point blank, because you are hiring an expert marketer. They better have their own channel. And so you can go onto our channel if you haven't already. I, I did direct you to it in my... Th um, you know, my th handwritten thank you card. Hopefully you checked out some of our property videos and so on, right? But yours will be on there. We'll have a full property video. I said, then there's Vimeo. That's a competitor. We also post on Vimeo. Have you heard of video Vimeo? And they're like, gosh, I haven't heard of Vimeo. I go, yeah, most realtors haven't either. So uh, it's important. We need to get a wide reach. Hey, Mr. And Mrs. Seller, do you recognize that house right there? That was a full video in regards to the house out there in Shingle Springs. It was listed by Century 21 and couldn't get it sold. And we did. Hey, Pinterest, how about that? Look at this right there. That's that same house, Mr. and Mrs. Seller. We had a page regarding Pinterest. So they're just kind of getting overwhelmed and wowed on all the stuff we're doing on social media. And I'll say, look, here's the deal, Mr. and Mrs. Seller. Most agents are not doing this on their own. They are hiring some professional company and they're relying on this company to do all this stuff. And quite frankly, I used to do that and they don't do it well. And so we actually do this ourselves and it's very, very effective. Now I have my website. We have the early birds, which would be early bird gets the worm or coming soon. And so we're going to post yours on there as well. And then once it goes live, oh, I, I do uh, a digital marketing coming soon as well. Then once it goes live, it switches over to featured listing and it's a much bigger page. All of these pictures, they link to either a full um, color uh, bank of uh, photos that we did or the uh, YouTube channel. I can put a link and direct them to my YouTube channel to watch your video. Obviously, with all this marketing, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, you could think that we certainly have a number of buyers that are showing interest. So we have buyers already ready to go. That's another advantage of working with us. You may recognize this property. This is a coming soon actual physical postcard. We send out up to 500 physical postcards to the up to 500 homes surrounding your home that are homeowners. And they go, I go, you might think, well, why are you renting or uh, sending these to homeowners? Why not renters? I go, good question. Because the most powerful marketing that there is, is word of mouth. And all of these homeowners already love where they live, right? And they have coworkers, family, friends that come over barbecues and their friends and coworkers go, oh my gosh, this is amazing out here. I love, I've always wanted to live in the country. And, uh, and so when they get my postcard, they're going to think of their family member, coworker, friend and say, hey, Susie, there's an open house this week and a grand opening and it's just down the street from us. This is your chance. Okay. There's another iteration of our coming soon or uh, just listed postcard inviting them to the grand opening open house. Um, when we do an open house, we do an open house for uh, six hours. Most realtors, honestly, are pretty lazy. If you're doing a two-hour open house, I, I would say, honestly, you're pretty lazy. Uh, sorry. But, you know, this is a job. This is our career. And if you're going to... I do one open house, by the way, and I do it for six hours and I set up 30 plus signs. It takes me an hour to set up the signs. It takes me an hour to take them down. If there's people showing up on the sixth hour, I, I keep it open and I let the sellers know that. And I say the reason for that where most realtors are missing the mark is they will put their signs out 
They will have some, they'll only be open for two hours, maybe three. But when people leave in the morning and they're taking their kids to soccer or they're running their errands, they see the open house, they'd like to pop in, but they don't have it in their schedule right now. They don't have the time. Hopefully it'll be there when I circle back on my way home. And if you're doing it for six hours on a Saturday, you will catch them on the way back home. And I've had so many that say, I can't believe you're still open. Oh my gosh, I was shocked. I had to come in and see, I thought you'd be done by now. And I go, no. Right. And a lot of times I get listings because they see that we're willing to work harder than most realtors. Okay. And I will tell them, I'll say, yeah, most realtors are pretty lazy to be honest with you. <laughs> so anyway, all right. Then, then if you don't know about list reports, you should get list reports because list reports is free. And I tell the sellers, I go, Hey, we actually have a service that we've contracted with that we go and have this company we put, give them your address and basically they'll do the research and tell you how far away the gym is, gas, coffee, movie theater, medical. I go, look, this is really important because we're appealing to three sets of buyers. One set of buyer is in town. Another set of buyer is out of town. And the third set of buyer is buyers working with another agent. Okay. So definitely those that are um, from out of town don't know the area. And they'd like to know these modern conveniences, even though your house may be out in the country. So we do that. We also let them know about the, the parks and the dog parks and the golf courses and all that stuff. That's really important. People like to play, right? It also does the food in the area. And it breaks it down into what type of food, Mexican pizza, American, blah, 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 and the price range and all that. It also does schools and it rates them. Now, what we do, we always do a full color flyer. Okay. Always do a full color flyer. We purposely don't put the price on there, Mr. Mrs. Seller. And the reason for that is I want to control the situation. I want them to call me. You want them to call me because I'm an expert working for you. Okay. If we just give them the price, I never get to know if they're interested or not. And then most realtors, I can't believe it. They don't put on the back of their flyer. They don't utilize this real estate. And it's a huge mistake. If you see a flyer that is blank on the back, you got a rookie realtor, in my opinion. You should utilize this real estate because we're expert marketers. So what I did is I had them shrink down all of those things that we had the company put from schools to conveniences, to parks, to eating, and it's on the back of our full color flyer. Now, you guys, if you don't know list reports, they do all this, okay? So it's all included in the thing, but the sellers don't know that. And they're like, oh my gosh, that's great. And I go, do you think when a buyer pulls this, that they are that there's a step above in regards to professionalism in their mind? of me as the realtor. And they go, yeah, they do. I go, they do. In fact, they want to call me because they're like, man, this guy's really giving us information that we need and want. Um, let's see. Also on your flyer, you should put, if you, since we have KV core, you should get a smart number. It's $27 a month. And that allows you to put a code on all your marketing, your postcards, your flyers, your website, whatever. And it says, um, to get either pricing or more information, or you could say full color video of this property on the inside, text, um, and whatever code you could say, if it's like Main Street, you could just put text Main Street to the smart number. And it will text them, uh, KV Core will text them whatever you put for them to get, let's say full color video, but then it'll also text you and say, hey, so-and-so from this number is showing interest in your property on Main Street. <laughs> Typically, they're pulling the flyer. They're sitting out in front of the house, okay? So, all right. Then, then I start going into the aspect of why you would work with a team versus a standalone agent. Again, I'm trying to differentiate myself from my competition, right? Um, so, we talk about you know our promise, your experience, referrals. Then I get into past sales, right? Now, if you haven't, if you're new, again, link up with one of your uh, success team members and leverage their success and say, hey, we work together, okay? All right, then I go into past client testimonials. And these are all five-star reviews. And I joke about it. I go, yeah, hey, these are all five-star reviews. Isn't that amazing? And then I go, truth be told, I wouldn't put the one stars in here, but don't worry, there aren't any, you know, and just have fun with them, building rapport. So I have all that in there and I may read some of them, right? Because it's a third party, even with me reading it to them. Then I talk into the aspect about a standalone agent and all the hats they need to wear and all the plates they're spinning versus having a team, okay, and breaking things down. Now, you go, well, I don't have a team. Well, yeah, you do. 
You got a title and escrow and a title rep. Okay. You got a, uh, a lender. You have a transaction coordinator. Okay. So these are all things that you can identify and bring up. Um, because again, the client's not going to really know they're looking to be led. All right. And then I get into de determining price, uh, the, the true value of the home. Okay. So I want to set the table about market value of your home is not what you have in the home. It's not what you need out of it. It's not what you want. It's not what it appraised for. It's not what you heard your neighbor's home sold for. It's not what the tax office says it's worth. It's not how much it's insured for. And it's not based on prices of homes where you're moving. That's not what makes it worth. What it is, true market value is based on today's market. And it's based on today's competition and based on today's financing and based on today's economic conditions and based on the location and based on normal marketing time and based on the buyer's perception of the condition of the property. Then I go into this graph. I don't have the time to go into this graph, but this is super important. I tell them, I go, if there's one thing I would leave you with today that you would take from me today is the aspect of how important to properly price your home. And that if you try to push your price outside of the market range, you will take longer to sell and you will sell for less money. And I do a whole, I take a piece of paper and I draw it all out and I give all these scenarios and all that stuff. It's really powerful. And I go, do you understand what I'm telling you? Because this is super important. And um, so then, then from there, I go, okay, do you, do you, can you see that we take marketing very serious? Do you see that, you know, you really are hiring a marketing genius and that's what you should hire as a realtor? Yes. Yes. And they go, yeah, absolutely. Oh my gosh. Okay. Again, where there's absence of value, there's a questioning of price. I've already told them my standard price is 6%, sometimes seven. Okay. Then I'll go into, then I pull into my EXP folder and I have it broken down into, I take and print out the listing paperwork and I have two copies, one for them, hard copy, one hard copy for me. I, I'm old school. I want them physically signing the page. Even if I give them an easy exit, you know, if you are unhappy, you can get out. There's something powerful about physically signing the paperwork and going through it. And I also, I also have them sign their copy I'm leaving with them. Okay. So um, I have them sign my copies I'm taking and I have them sign the ones I'm leaving for them. That way, if there's ever a question and they, you know, we uh, later down the road and I go, Hey, pull out your paperwork. You know, if they question something, I go, did you see there? And it's their signature. I go, did you see that we went over this together? And, Oh yeah, I guess we did. I forgot about that. Okay. There's a little nugget for you. It's pretty powerful. All right. So then I go, okay, now we're going to transition into, we've gone over marketing. We've gone over what sets me apart from other realtors. Now we're going to get into valuation. I treat it like a bullseye. I'm going to go uh, uh, large and we're going to drill down into your specific home. Okay. And so I print two copies of their uh, county records of their, and I give them and I say, hey, does everything look correct on that? This one wasn't. I actually had to cross it out because it had three bedroom two. And they said, no, it's actually five and three. I go, good to know. Okay. So I get, and I leave a copy with them. Then on our MLS, there's what's called trend reports. And I do trend reports based on initially a three county trend, Placer, Sacramento, El Dorado. And we go over that the last 15 or 16 months. And then I go into uh, their specific county. Okay. Then I put in if it's a three bedroom or a four bedroom or a single story or some kind of thing that's unique to drill it down even more. And we start tracking the trends. And I can say on this, if you notice, this is one I used on a listing point. I circled it. I go, look at all this light green. This is all pent up inventory. Okay. Look at where the thing, the market is trending. We're going down. That's why we really need to aggressively price your home. Okay. So I'll go into that. And I, and I print two copies of each. I leave one for them. It's always important that you leave something with them. They feel good about it. All right. And then I start getting into my comps. And again, I drill down from county, then so on, and then specific. You guys all know how to pull comps and so on. I, do, I pull full comp sheets and I never leave the full comp sheets. And if they ask for them, I say, I'm sorry, I can't. It's got you know, private information, seller's phone number. I'm just not allowed to leave it. But what I do leave them 
is the single page printout sheet. And I write on it and so on and so forth. Okay. Then from there, I said, look, we're not ready to determine price, believe it or not, because we're not going to go live on the market for another two or three weeks. So what I recommend is we get a price range that we feel comfortable and we're going to go through it together. We just did it by going through all the comps and I interact with them. I say, hey, based on what we've gone over today, what we've gone over, um, what do you feel that this price, this home should you know, accurately be priced in this, in this changing, shifting market? And then be quiet and let them, and you'll be amazed. They'll, they'll want to, with all the data that you've given them and so forth, now, they may say, well, what do you think? I go, no, I got to know. I, I have no problem telling you, but I'm kind of curious. I find, and I smile, I, I kind of find most sellers have a pretty darn good idea of what, where their house should be priced at. So prove me wrong. Look, what, what do you think? And I go right back to it. I go, what do you think this house should uh, sell for in this tough market? What would you price it at? Right? And then if it's high, then we can start working. I go, great. Tell me how you got there based on the data. If it's right where I want, then I go, great. You know what? I would agree. I was going to tell you you know, X, Y, Z. I said, great. So we're in agreement. We're in agreement. We're not going to list for another three weeks. I got to get my professional photographer, my videographer over here. You got to get the house prepped. We got to do a staging, you know, consultation. So we got a little bit of time. I'll do some pre-marketing ahead of time. Um, by the way, that is the power of EXP. We have one singular office with 90,000 agents. Whereas our MLS here says you can only pre-market or coming soon to the agents in your office. Well, our office is 90,000 agents. So I bring that up to the seller. I go, that's one of the main reasons why I went to EXP uh, for sellers. I mean, it's just such a huge advantage. I mean, how big do you think the local office is here that you're talking to? Lions or Century 20, I don't know, maybe 40 agents, 60? I have 90,000 I'm marketing to and letting them know before we ever go live on the market. So they're pretty wild. And I said, look, as I said in the beginning, I'd be a terrible uh, listing agent and, and uh, in my opinion, not be a great professional on your behalf if I didn't ask for the business. You always want me to ask for the business for you when I'm working for you. So is there any reason that you would not list with me after seeing all of the information that I shared with you today? Well, we're going to interview another agent. I said, that's great. I'll tell you what. A lot of times people want to go forward on the interview of the other agent uh, only because they want to honor their word and they made an appointment time. It's very common in our industry. If you feel that you want to go ahead and take care of the paperwork with me, I'll go ahead and call Russ. He's a buddy of mine. I'll let him know that he doesn't need to come out and, uh, and it's not a problem. And I'll give him the first shot to, to bring a buyer and we could, you know, Russ and I can work together on it. Would you like me to call Russ for you? Uh, Cause I know sometimes sellers just don't want to do that. And I'll just let, you know, Russ and I know each other. Well, yeah, if you could call him, that'd be great. I go, great. Yeah, let's just take care of the paperwork. Again, we have an easy exit. You know, if something doesn't uh, line up with what I said, you can exit at any time. Is that fair? Powerful closing question. Is that fair? Right? They're almost always going to say yes. And then you knock out the paperwork. And I, I don't go in and they go, oh, well, what do you charge commission? I go, oh, well, I just charge the standard 6%. So, and then I just keep moving forward. And they go, oh, okay, yeah. I go, did you think it was going to be more? Because I've had sellers go, gosh, is that it? I thought it'd be more. I, I've literally had that. So I go, well, we could do the 7% actually. And I don't have time to go into it. We've gone over. But anyway, I wanted to give you nuclear war. Sign the paperwork. Walk out of there. Do not leave without a listing agreement. I'll leave you with this. If they go, well, I don't know. We need to think about it. I go, you know what? Let's do this. Let's take care of the paperwork. And you're not ready to sell for three, four, five months. But I, there are Bay Area buyers. I told you we have buyers. Let me keep it as a pocket listing. That means it doesn't go on the market. You're not going to have showings and all that. They have to deal directly with me and give me the power that I can reach out to some of these Bay Area buyers that just got sack loads of cash, you know, and not a lot of sense. And um, and let's list it instead of the seven fifty. Let's list it at at eight hundred and fifty thousand. Would you be happy if we got you 850,000 and you know you didn't have to put it on the market and open houses and all that? They go, oh my gosh, that'd be amazing. Great, well, let's just take care of the paperwork. That gives me the power to be able to get it out to some of these Bay Area buyers and they have to go through me. I will always call you first uh, in regards to if you're willing to show it and so forth. Um, and then you know we can plan over the next three months, getting it ready for the actual live uh, on market date. Sound good? Great, let's go ahead and sign here. All right. I had to talk fast because there's a lot of information. It was asked, how long is my listing appointment? 
it can be pretty long. I know Tom's are pretty quick um, from what I understand, uh, but he does a lot of the pre-prep. One, it's Tom Daves. He's got radio advertising. He does a pre-listing package. So they got all that. So basically he's just kind of there going over comparables. He's already done all the groundwork and doesn't have to sell himself. That's why they call them. So his can be much quicker, but I feel like I need to go in and overwhelm them with data and just expertise and so on. And I get 6% and a 495 transaction coordination fee every time. Any questions? All right. No questions. Well, we've gone over. So um, hopefully that was a value to you. Oh, the uh, let me give you. Where's my book? Let me give you the uh, where are some of those stats that I got. I do have a question, Matthew, or a suggestion. This is Anna Maria. Anna Maria. Um, would it be impossible to maybe spend some time in a different session about uh, the importance of pricing it correctly and stats? And that I believe you go in more detail with the sellers about it. I think that would be beneficial, at least for me. Yeah, we may have one of the other leaders in a future Atomic Habits uh, kind of go over. I think that would be a good topic in regards to how to properly pull comps, how to properly okay. price, how to look at well, market not necessarily. and so on. No, I mean, in particular, the set, the missing on the momentum and overpricing it. Because looking at oh. comps, most of us know, but articulating and proofing to a seller that look this is why it's so crucial to price it correctly whatever the price is that's yeah. the part that i'm talking about yeah that would be valuable because i didn't take time to go into that graph that i mark out mm -hmm. and i mean it's it, they're it's a powerful thing and it leads right from that into my then going over comps and i got them yeah. right there with me going oh yeah we don't want to overprice this right? yeah if we can do that that'd be awesome so at some point in the future, we'll look at doing that, or I can just maybe film a separate video and put it on my YouTube channel or something like that. And you guys can look at it. Um, the, the stats, the, the graphs and things of that nature, um, Statista, S-T-A-T-I-S-T-A -T -T is where I found some of these things. Uh, and then uh, List Hub was one. And then I just did screen, uh, screen, like print screen on my Facebook and Instagram and YouTube. And because really all, when you have a marketing book, it also keeps you, it's like having a script. I literally turn the page and I know what my next talking point is. I don't get thrown off like hardly at ever. And if I do, I can go right back to it and just be right on track. Um, so that's been another little added benefit that I didn't realize, but super valuable but it this just stays in my car if you don't sign the agreement at the time do you take your marketing book with you so it's not left there for other agents or oh i never leave a mark i have one this is one this yeah. is like gold this is mine they go yeah. oh could you leave that i go no sorry this is this is this is my one marketing book i use it to share with all my sellers Perfect. and i don't believe in leaving anything behind that another agent when i would go and agents were ahead of me i would always ask to take their stuff <laughs> I'd say, oh, Mr. And Mrs. Seller, um, since we're going to go ahead and do the listing with me, um, let me go ahead and take those, you know, things off your hand and, uh, you know, dispose of them for you and so on. And I just try to get them so I can see what my competition's doing and so forth. That's where some of these things came from. I'm like, oh, you know, things that uh, others were doing. Good question. Any other questions? All right. Have an amazing rest of your Wednesday, you guys. This will be recorded. It'll both be on Atomic Habits, uh, powered by EXP Facebook page. And then if you want to go ahead and go on to my YouTube channel and subscribe, there's a lot of really good content that we're putting there. It's Matthew Stewart Real Estate. Um, this will be uh, uh, put on my YouTube channel as well. Have an amazing rest of your Wednesday. Oh, remember, Freedom Friday, 9 a.m., AtomicTeamMeeting.live. We'll see you there. Thanks, Matt. All right. Bye-bye.